Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Sigwin on Windows 10. This is a great program that allows you to run GNU and Linux open source tools on Windows. It's great if you need to use Windows, but you don't want to part ways with the lovely Linux commands that you're used to or that you want to learn. I'll also show you a little bonus on how to set up your command prompt to be able to access the commands as well in this video. If you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bells for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. I'm here on the sigwin.com website where we'll be downloading Sigwin from. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below. If you want to read up a little bit about Sigwin, you can read this section right here on what it is and what it isn't, but let's get right into the download. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the install Sigwin link, and then we'll go ahead and get to choose between the 64-bit version of Sigwin and the 32-bit version of Sigwin for Windows. So depending on whatever architecture you have, go ahead and select your executable that you want to download. So since I have this 64-bit, I'm going to go ahead and choose this setup x86-64.exe and I'm going to go ahead and download it. After it's downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and start it up and that will launch an installer. I'm going to go ahead and give this installer administrative privileges so it can install on the computer. And let's go through the install process here with Sigwin to get things set up. Let's go ahead and hit next. And there are a few choices here. We're going to select the install from internet. This is the easiest way. It's just going to go ahead and pull down all packages from the internet if you have an internet connection. Of course, if you don't, you can go ahead and bring those packages in from a local directory. Or if you just want to download and not install the packages, you can also select that option as well. So the default's fine for me. I'm going to get hit next. And now we're asked about where we want to install Sigwin. So it's going to create a new folder called Sigwin64 for 64-bit since that's the installer I selected. You can also browse and change your directory if you want, but in most cases, you'll just want to leave it here. That way you don't have any issues with the location of your directory. Another option that you have here at the bottom is installing Sigwin across the board for everybody to be able to use. As you can see, it says that's recommended, or you can just set it up for just me to use, so this current user. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up for all users, might as well. Everyone can enjoy Linux commands that way, and I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Following that, we're asked where we want to go ahead and download the packages to. So this is just a place to store the packages before they get installed. My user Savvy Nick downloads is fine for me. You can select whatever you want if you have a different place and go ahead and hit next. The default here, use the system proxy settings is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And after that, we're asked to go ahead and select a mirror closest to us. So go ahead and scroll through a little bit and just find one close enough to you. I noticed that this is a Virginia Tech here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that because that's close enough to me and hit next. This will take a few minutes just to go ahead and download a few packages. And now we're asked to go ahead and select any packages that we want to install. So here in front of us we have the all expand button which shows you all the different various subcategories you can choose from. There's actually quite a few different subcategories available to us, but for now, I'm just interested in something very minimal. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the base package and select to install only the base package. Reason being, this gives me most of the tools that, that I wanna use. As you can see here, we get bash with that, and we can even create scripts with that. And you get common tools like grep, so you can search for patterns and text files. You'll also get ls to list files, cd to change directories. You get which, so you can find paths to executables, as well as vim, the terminal text editor. So this is plenty to go ahead and start out with. So, and one thing I wanna mention is that you can always go back and select other packages that you may have missed in order to go ahead and install them later. So this isn't the only time you can select these packages. After I have the dropdown set to install, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Here you're given a brief overview of all the packages that will be installed in order to make Sigwin run and the ones that you selected to go ahead and install on top of that. Following that, I'm gonna hit next again and now it's gonna go ahead and install those packages. Using Sigwin on Windows 10 is a great way to practice using Linux commands and it lets you also get used to how to navigate a Linux or Unix based system. If you like to review if you'd like to review some of the basics of the Linux terminal, check out my absolute basics video. It's a great place to start. We'll give this a few moments to go ahead and finish out. All right, and once the installation is complete, we're just given the option of whether or not to create an icon on the desktop and add it to our start menu. I'll go ahead and do both. It's fine by me. I can always remove it later. 
and hit finish. Now I see Sig164 Terminal here in the background. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help me out. So let's go ahead and start Sigwin and just try using it real quick. And as you can see, it looks much like a terminal that you would find in Linux. So let's go ahead and try some commands. If I do ls, I can list anything and everything in the directory. If I do clear, it clears everything out. And we can also change directory. So let's just go to the root directory cd root and i'm going to do ls as you can see here it's not the c drive here as our root instead it's an artificial root directory created by sigwin that way it doesn't interfere with the windows side of things but you can change directories if you want to the c drive and as you can tell now i have access to the windows side of things as well some of the other commands i mentioned was which let's see if we have that now we'll just do which bash and you can see that we have bash inside of user bin bash all right, that's awesome, but let's also get this working in command prompt as well. So if I start a new command prompt, if I just type in CMD, here's my command prompt. If I type in LS, you can see that it doesn't know what LS is. Well, how do we make this work? Well, here's the bonus here. I'm gonna exit out of these and let's search for the environmental variables path. If we just type in ENVI, you can see that I have edit the system environment path. And then let's go down to the environmental variables button. In here, let's go to path and we'll add in a new path. So if we hit edit and then we hit new, we can add in another path and that path will be to the Sigwin directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and browse for it. And since it was installed on the C drive, let's go ahead and navigate to the C drive. And then under the Sigwin 64 folder, we want the bin folder. Let's go ahead and add this in. As you can see here, I have C Sigwin 64 bin I'm gonna hit OK here and make sure to hit OK on this one as well let's go ahead and completely get out of here so OK here too all right and once you've edited that let's go ahead and start the command prompt again so in the command prompt we can now change directory so let's just go to the downloads directory and I'm gonna do LS and you can see now it's listing out all the files located in the downloads directory well that's great because LS is working now for us we can also do which so I'll just do which bash again and it tells me that it's in user bin bash. So now you can go ahead and use those Linux commands and tools in both places, either start up a Sigwin 64 terminal or just use your command prompt in order to go ahead and use the tools as well. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Sigwin on Windows 10. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.